All right, people, welcome everybody to our first ever mini tourney show. My name is Ushi Leslie, and I'm the program de delivery partner for First Lego League in BC and the Yukon. And before we get actually started, I would like to remind everyone that we are recording this session and that we'll post it on First BC's YouTube channel so that you can watch it later at any time. So for this mini tourney, 11 teams signed up and six actually supplied files. Well done, all 11 teams, for considering to participate and to be brave. And even more well done to the six teams who for managing to produce videos and make them available so early in the season. Next slide, please. So these are our participating teams. 25 2 to 0, the Lansdowne Friars, 28 7 1 8 failure management, 59 201 Brainy Blocks, 60 203 the Unknown Code, 6308 the Cybernetic Squad, and 63 7 8 5 the PCS Pacers. And for this event, Mark Atkinson and Terry Wright were our judges. Mark Atkinson is also our regional judge advisor, and Terry Wright is my co-partner. And David Tesh, our head referee for the whole region, was our referee for this. Barish Golland is running this show. He's also the first senior mentor for BC and the Yukon. So Barish is showing the slides and the videos. And the people you hear talking today are Mark, Mark Atkinson and myself. Okay. Next slide, please. So the tasks that uh, each team had to do was a one minute project presentation that uh, would be scored with very simplified, simplified rubrics and also a one minute robot run, which would be scored as usual. The points are given for the five best presentations and the five best robot runs. And these points will be added up for all mini tourneys that a, tem that a team might participate in and we'll award prizes after the last one. So for this, we'll start with the project presentations. So while all six teams provided robot runs, only five sent in presentation ones and one of those didn't really work, that was the wrong file. So there are only four that we can show. And here they are starting with the Lansdowne Friars and Mark will talk about them. Not given us permission to show them. Hello, we are the Landstown Friars, and today is October the 24th. We are considering... We are considering making a piano that shows lights. Why people don't like to play the piano is because it's very complicated and hard to learn a new instrument. Our way to get people more involved is to put lights on <laughs> and when they light up so you know where to play. This is a new solution because you're not exactly sure if it is a new solution because we've heard of concepts that are similar, but we believe that it would still be useful. Our next action is to research about people who struggle to play simple piano. Yeah, uh, interesting idea. It was a little difficult to hear everybody in the video, but I also know that this was a pretty short notice and, and hiding everyone's faces was kind of necessary. Uh, nevertheless, everyone on the team sounded enthusiastic and the idea of using light visuals to help people learn how to play piano sounds like a good idea. The friar should do a little research, I think, and just determine how, how new, if, if this is, is really new or if it's not. And if it's not entirely new, where could they add value? It reminded me a little bit of that video game uh, Guitar Hero uh, in a good way. So well done, Lansdowne. Friars? So the next video is from the Unknown Code. We are TM60203, also known as the Unknown Code. Our innovation project is to help dancers get better shoes so that they don't hurt their feet as much. We went to Ballet Victoria and we noticed that they have 
spring floors. The problem we are thinking of is that spring floors are not very cheap and they do not last forever. Our idea to help is to 3D print <coughs> stuff that goes in your ballet shoes to make them more spongy. We're still not 100% on this project. It's still a work in progress, but we have some good ideas, and if you have any feedback, we would love to hear it. Ba, ba, na, ba. <laughs> nice work, Unknown Code. Uh, the team looked engaged and looked like they were having fun. Uh, great work on the video, which showed the team visiting Ballet Victoria to, to assess the idea of making shoe inserts to help dancers and decrease cost of the spring floors they dance on. I think the team should spend some time assessing their project and if they tr if, if it will truly solve the problem they're addressing. For example, do dancers already have inserts in their shoes? What, what's the advantage of 3D printed ones? So I think you want to dig deep and um, make sure that you uh, that your idea is, is fruitful and uh, it's a good one. Um, again, great pitch, enthusiastic team and uh, look for look, look forward to uh, to seeing more from you. All right, now we go to the failure management. So hi, uh, judges, we're failure management, Team Red from Metaridge, and this is going to be our one minute elevator pitch. So the thing that we're going to do is we're making a self retraining robot for pitching greens, chipping greens, tennis courts, and pickleball courts, and badminton courts. Okay, so the main reason why we're doing this is to not spend lots of time recollecting balls from the field and it just makes it really easy for people to play who have injuries and people who are seniors. So um, the, main, uh, the main way that this is going to work is we're going to be using a Raspberry Pi which is a single board credit card computer that you can get relatively inexpensively using a Spike Prime hat which allows this little computer to communicate with Spike Prime motors and AI recognition for objects. So it can AI recognize where the objects are, go to it, and using Spike Prime hat, it can communicate to motors and tell it where it needs to go and how it needs to pick up the ball to come back to the place it's delivering the balls. This is not something we are looking at right now. <laughs> All right, so failure management, uh, clear speaking, great presentation. I thought the team looked poised, collected, and kind of displayed a, a really calm confidence when pitching their idea for a robot that collects court balls. I think the idea fits in well with LEGO Robotics in general and seems practical and realistic. If team failure management runs with this idea, it will be interesting to see how well they do with the hardware and software. And I wonder what kinds and sizes of different court balls will be able to be fetched. Great job, failure management. Right. Now we have a bit of talk about the brainy blocks. Hello. One of our favorite things to do is bouncing on our trampoline. We know not everyone has the chance to do that though, due to cost, fear, and physical limitations. It may come as a surprise, but bouncing on a trampoline like this can have benefits for seniors. Our research has shown that bouncing can help improve balance, circulation, and reduce stress. We are thinking about 4D technologies like virtual reality that we can use to create an experience of bouncing. Um, the PCS Pacers. Yeah, most of us on the team like to do is playing basketball. Basketball, we are considering how to make basketball available for anyone who is Hi, I'm Josh, and we are wondering if we could put a chip in the ball that can be individually tuned to on earpiece that every player who is visually challenged is wearing. Hi, I'm Gustav. We are still very early in our innovative idea, so we still have a lot of research to do on basketball challenges for players who are visually challenged and current available solutions, etc. Thank you for watching! Awesome job!
PCS Pacers. I, I thought uh, that was an enthusiastic and an efficient pitch for the idea of putting a chip in a basketball to help people with visual disabilities. Thought the team looked cohesive and, and tight knit. Um, the, the project sounds ambitious. It could be challenging, but if they can do the required research and engage people who are actually visually challenged, this really might be a project to run with. So um, yeah, great job and, and looking forward to uh, seeing this one come to fruition. I think it's a great idea. All right, let's go to, to the next slide. So here is what the judges have assigned. I should mention that they found it tough to decide in some cases. And they did award one point to the Brainy Blocks because it looked like there was a project presentation video, even if there was no functioning link, functioning link to it. Overall, it was very interesting to see and le to learn about the various ideas. Now we here as the organizers are learning along with the teams. So for the next mini tourney, we will try to give more detailed instructions. As for now, we notice that just holding a sign with the team name and the team number and the date does not really work. So the team should introduce themselves with the date as part of the one minute video, but the introduction should be really short, just the team name, date, and then go on with your presentation. So that's for next time. And we'll, we'll write a, a few more detailed things, but I haven't even read them out. So failure management is, is coming out on top with five points, followed by the PCS Pacers with four, the Unknown Code with three, Landstone Friars with two, and the Brainy Blocks with one. And of course, you know that only the first, the top five points will get points. So on to the robot runs. And we start with the robot run of failure management. Uh, unfortunately, just five seconds long. So let's see. <laughs> that's fine, I think, actually. Yeah, that's fine. yeah. I'll restart that. That's fine, I think, actually. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. so this is what our our referee can't be here today. So he sent me what what to say. So what he said was, you do you you need to clearly show the launch of the robot. Take a moment to introduce your team and describe how your robot meets the motor, sensor, and size requirements. At the end of the run, show the end state of the missions you have attempted. I wasn't able to give you a score for the mission you did because I couldn't tell the end state of the model or if it was set up correctly. The robot itself looks good. I think you are off to a good start. So this is what our referee had to say, and uh, the score was 70 points for this. Let's go on to the brainy blocks. Is that good? I guess that, that was the run. So the brainy blocks uh, scored 120 points. And the remarks of our referee was, take a moment before the robot run starts to describe how your robot meets the motor, sensor, and size requirements. Clearly, show the end states for each mission attempted, and the team can even narrate what they think the end state is to support what the camera is showing. Apart from that, a good run, and well done. Off we go to the PCS Pacers. So for this video, this was also 120 points. Again, uh, the remark was take a moment at the start to introduce your team and describe how your robot meets the motor, sensor, and size requirements. 
but there was a good angle on the video and a good job showing the end state of each mission that was attempted. So also remember to go through these end states slowly. And again, the team can narrate what they think the end states are to support what the camera is showing. So good early season run, well done. On we go to the Lansdowne Friars. Hi, we are the Lansdowne Friars, and this is our robot. It has three motors, and this is it doing a few of the tasks. So when you look at this, you can um, see that the team, well, first I read what, what our, our referee had to say. So he said it was a good run for early in the season. Again, make sure you clearly show how your robot fits in the inspection area. Also take your time showing the end state of each of the models. And it is sometimes helpful to narrate what you think the end state of the mission model is to support what the video is showing. That was a run of 130 points. And I think they were the only team that actually uh, delivered any of the audience members. And you can see just now there, there are two in the view. One is completely in, in one of the target areas and that's why they got points for that. Um, I would add one to mention to, uh, wanted to mention that a couple of videos ago, we saw one video that did the, uh, the mission that looks like a flower opening. And I thought they did it very cleverly with the little hook they had on their on their robot. Anyway, let's go on to the unknown code. Okay. No, don't. Good job, little baby robot. Yay! That was good. Yay, yay! Yay, yay! Oh. Nice. Yay! Yes! <laughs> Wasn't that nice? So the, the unknown code got 140 points for this run. So uh, the uh, our referee said, like, you don't have to do the titles or music, although it was quite fun to listen to, I must say. But he said, no, you don't have to do the titles or music in the video. Uh, also, the straight above camera can be hard to see, can, can make it hard to see the end state of the model or to see the height of the robot with respect to the small inspection area. An angled perspective of the camera is better. Introduce your robot and describe how it meets the requirements for motors, sensors, and, seat and size. Show the end state of each model really clearly so that the referees can calculate the score. In mission nine, it's hard to tell if the boat made it past the black line, but I think it did. In mission two, it is difficult to see if the red flag drops, but I think it does. A good run, nice job. Yes, 140 points for the unknown code for this run. And if I can ask, uh, add something, I find it really interesting that this team starts in the other starting area and, and does different missions from the previous ones. Need to see. All right, let's go on to the cybernetic squad.
Well, that run had the following remarks. Good angle of the video. Introduce your team and the robot at the start and explain how it meets the motor, sensor, and size requirements. Your robot looks quite tall, so it would be good to have a ruler beside it at the beginning to check the height for the camera. Really good navigation of the board. You are off to a great start with a very solid robot run. And that robot run, in fact, had 180 points. And yes, it was impressive. It's, it's the only team so far that attempted the, the, the light show mission in the middle of the table, and it looked really good. It's also the only team that I've seen so far that, that starts at one end of the table and goes all the way, well, almost to the other one. So well done. All right, let's look at the next slide. And this slide shows the points that were earned for the robot runs. So the, <clears throat> the PCS Pacers and the Brainy Blocks had the same score, so they each got two points. And boy, I did find it super interesting to see the various robots and how many different missions were done by these teams. So from the remarks of our referee for each run, it is clear that we, the organizers, were not specific enough about how to film the robot runs. Next time, we'll have to make sure everybody has seen the official instructions about how to do this. And uh, just a quick recap, the robot run is only one minute long. But before the start, you need to show the robot and its dimensions. You need to show the whole table correctly set up. It's good if you count, count down three, two, one, Lego, and then you do your run. And after the one minute is up, zoom in at, at uh, the various missions that you did. Do it slowly so that it's clear for the referee to see what the end state is. And it's fine if you say things like, oh, we, we pushed this thing, we opened the flower, we got the um, light um, show indicator up to the blue, stuff like that. And then it's easier for the referees to, to see what you've done and to score it. Yeah, so we have the cybernetic squad with their 180 points. The unknown code in second place with 140. Landstone Friars have 130. PCS paper, Pacers and Brainy Blocks have 120 each. And Failure Management got 70. And in the next slide, we can see the total points that the teams earned today. Our overall winner for this mini tourney is the unknown code with seven points, followed by PCS Pacers with six. And then we have three teams in a tie with five points each, Failure Management, Lansdowne Friars, and the Cybernetic Squad, while the Brainy Bots have three points. It is, I find it is funny to note, that the team with the best project presentation got zero points for their robot run, and the team with the best robot run got zero points for their project presentation. <laughs> I'm sure this will be different next time, though. You, you will all get more points, I think. Um, yeah, next slide. So this was a small mini tourney because we only had six teams that provided um, um, videos, but I, I am confident that this will change. So thank you very much, teams. I found it very brave that you actually did this because it's absolutely brand new and it's so early in the season that nobody is really ready, but you still did it. Well done. And as I mentioned before, I found it super interesting to see the different project ideas, the different robots, and the different way the various missions can be done. We will uh, email some feedback for each team. And the next mini tourney is in January 2024. And I hope to see you all back then, plus many more teams. And by the way, our next coach chat is on Monday, November the 13th at 7.30 p.m. Topic will be, uh, we have an open discussion, but we'll also include award allocation and uh, thoughts that the referee ha referees have about how you should be doing stuff when you are as a team at the table. We'll, inf we'll email info about uh, this event to all the teams and of course also about the next mini tourney. 
And uh, yeah, that with it's only half past four, but this is a small event and this uh, concludes our show today. So I hope you will all have a great weekend and this you found this helpful.